all right you asked for it and you got it what is up you guys realistic gaming here today we're gonna be reacting to some more thomas the train videos because you guys seemingly like to uh love these videos as the numbers don't lie on the screen pretty insane right now we could get this video to like 2000 likes that would be awesome and also i want to address one thing you guys keep saying that i'd be scared watching these videos that's cat boy i did not get scared watching these Whoa. now you guys might have some question what shed 17 is as myself do so i went ahead and asked my big brain friend google some questions and it says what is shed 17 it says uh shed 17 is one of the engine maintenance sheds at sorter research it is the location which gives the shed 17 duology its name right so that's pretty interesting and let's go see well um, it says what happened to thomas in shed 17 it says after thomas was hit by a train he was taken to shed 17 where many multiple clones of him were made until wilhelm and hans uh, got one right most of the other clones were scattered all over the shed with one of them that was still alive was kept in an enormous tank at the end of the shed all right that sounds pretty freaky man and also if you guys know any backstories about this drop some knowledge in the comments i would totally appreciate it and for those that don't know anything about this all right so grab some snacks kick back and relax and let's enjoy the show oh yeah one more thing shout out to paul's vids for the awesome video all right, here we go. Um, why is it loading? Why did, oh. Yo, that's pretty brilliant. <laughs> it's his intro, I thought it was like loading or something. Ooh. All right, Paul's vids. Oh man. Solder Island. Oh, so this is where the maintenance shack is uh located at. Oh look, we got Thomas in the background. My boy cruising. Oh. Oh my god, what happened to the windmill? Did he crash into the windmill or something? Why is it knocked over? Oh, this is the present day, up to date. Alright, there goes Thomas on his route. Oh man. So it's showing the past how it used to be and the present how it looks now. It's all like dirty and beat up man, what happened? Oh it's all, dude it's all rusted. Oh man, seems like it used to be fairly uh, nice compared to now how it is. It's all broken down and rusted out. stories that have charmed an entire generation. From the books to the television series, people around the world have grown up with the railway stories and all their cheerful characters. Troublesome engines. But the truth behind Thomas and his friends was no children's fantasy. Let's see what the truth is. Would be horrifying. Shit, 17. Oh man. Yeah, that does not look like a place you would want to be. It is 1945, and the remote island of Sodor, off the northwest coast of England, has emerged from the fog of World War II, relatively oh. unscathed and untouched. What is it like? The uh, island served as a detention camp for Germans living in England. That's how Professor came to be here. Professor Wilhelm Goethe was born in 1903 in Munich, Germany. In Germany, a doctor wow. in biology, he became a prominent advisor to the ruling party in the 30s. Oh. So this feels like we're watching a movie in history class or something. In 1939, as war escalated, he, his wife Olga, and four-year-old son Hans fled the country. Thumbs. The world at war, 1973. Boy, be looking like Benjamin Franklin. Like a cut, bro. That's what he wanted people to believe. The fact is, his experiments were hard to stomach even for his own people. In truth, he had become a prominent figure in the government. But as his work oh. progressed, 
questions and objections had been raised in the higher So he was really in there, the huh? His work with genetics and DNA was true. Lab assistant disorder research LTD, Dr. Owen Root. Of the human genome. What Professor Goetze was most successful in, however, was keeping his history a secret until his death. An secret. attempt to gain favor That's among what you gotta the German do, man. You gotta Helm keep Goetze your was stuff at the secret. Forefront of the government's most fanatical policies. In 1938, he was influential in instigating the infamous Sajmelnacht, the Night of Sawdust. But, as his experiments advanced, he became a much less popular figure and soon oh, feared man. for his and his family's lives. As soon as he escaped to England, he was banged up here. But locals were nice to him, there was no hostility, and many of them chose to live here after the war. Following their release, oh, man. Professor Goethe, Olga, and young Hans chose to remain. After studying under his father, Hans left at the age of 18 and went at to university 18? on the mainland, studying biology Boy and engineering, out. writing several pioneering papers about genetics and the splicing of DNA with mechanical implants. Wow, these guys were really big brain, huh? The technique of manipulating genetic material to splice with what? Mechanic Manipulating place, genetic material? Attachments. Dude, this guy However, is insane. much like his father, the British government became more and more concerned with Hans Goetze's proposals. So he was forced to seek financial backing from home. It's like he's, he's an evil genius or something. A few bob, so Hans came back. He saw our little island as some sort of refuge where he could work in peace. Soon every nutcase and eccentric was coming over. By 1962, Hans had set up Sodor Research, a small Sodor lab near Research. the town of Alsborough. But soon the enterprise began supplying medical equipment and machinery, and quickly grew to become a large complex, comprising wow. its own links to the growing Sodor Rail Dude, system. Dude, he started in that little no, building, and look at this. The town was working there when Professor Hans took a liking to her. Soon they were married, and not long after, the town was buzzing with news of her pregnancy. Baby Aww. Thomas was born in 1960. Baby Thomas. Throughout the early years of his life, he would watch the growing railway oh, network boy looking with fresh. fascination. He couldn't get enough of trains. His dad bought him one of the first video cameras, and he'd be on the platforms every day. You can see me in some of those tapes. Hey, Mr. Hartley. Morning, Thomas. Hey. He was friends with everyone. Even that simple bloke who right, so it seemed like Thomas was well known and he was, was liked by everyone. Were the old steam engines. Steam the engines steam were engines. the dying art on the British mainland. But Hans also had a So that's why he's a steam engine like train. Son, and likes to keep them running for our purposes. Taking orders from the labs to the growing docks. Or to the mainland to be transferred to modern postal express trains. But as the Sodor rail system expanded, it oh, found wow. itself increasingly under the supervision Dude, look at of all the those real British tracks. Rail Network and appointed a new controller. Roy, get off my f***ing platform! Oh! Sir Topham Hat, born into money. Top man hat, don't seem like he's too nice. started wearing a top hat all the time. Of course, the Islanders had a different name for him. Fat bastard. you've never met such a cold-hearted <laughs> as him. <laughs> Yo, steam engine volunteers so Tom Hammond had me jam. Rail employees shut down the branch line and the smaller stations. He was happy to let the railway rust away. Railway just like controller. They did to the main line. But the fortunes of the railway were about to take a profitable turn. A stroke of luck for the island that would result from. Dude, his eyes are so freaky. Come on, we're gonna be late. What's the time? Thomas, get moving. Young Thomas loved following railway. He'd be out all the time, hoping to catch a new train on his camera. So Thomas was really yeah, obsessed with trains, huh? He won't wait for us. Unfortunately, he didn't take as much notice of the be safety of the signs. I'm not being late again. Have we missed oh. it yet? Dude, Where's back the away. Did not get too close it's to the tracks. It must be late again. Thomas, come on. It's Dude, he's literally up. standing on the train tracks. Oh! Yo, Hans he just got mortified. hit. He disappeared from public view. God said family tragedy. Lapse. Locking himself in, he wouldn't allow anyone in there. Eventually, Whoa. his father Wilhelm came to see him. 
In a few days, a major laboratory had been locked down, followed by an ending. That must be Shed 17. Shed, there you which go. Was to become off limits to all. All production was shut down, orders weren't met, but the two Professor Goetzers didn't care. More and more equipment was being delivered daily, but no one was allowed in Shed 17. Because he was trying to get Questions Thomas being asked to be a so train, well. right? Where were the Goetzers? Would there be no funeral for young Thomas? And where was the body? So this is like the origin Thomas of Thomas, right? If I'm not mistaken. He'd been taken to the complex, but was never moved by rail. We all assume the obvious. He was still in the lab. But if Thomas was there, was he still alive? And what was the purpose of keeping him at the complex? Oh man, many questions. We will see. The doors of Sodor research were reopened. In an open invitation to the people of the <gasps> Yo, island, that is so Thomas freaky. Out of Shed 17. That is legit Thomas on the train now. It took me a moment to realize oh, what it was I was looking at. Bro. Said, hey, Mr. Hartley. It dawned on me he even what talks Hal's like Thomas himself as a human being. One woman yeah, I would be Thomas terrified. Smile that was. I had to run off around the side of the shed. I Dude, Are this is right? insane. As news spread across the country, the world's media rushed got to uh, Got to experiment revealed. They kept trying to interview I mean, he, me. he wanted I to save his son, right? He did, it with, he did it one way or another. On Sodor Island. Questions asked about science ethics. It's fair to say I was pretty nervous at times. I'm joined now by Keith Hartley. But I think I put on a brave face. Oh what man. What do you think when you first came to meet Thomas the Tank Engine? <laughs> Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, dude, he threw up. <gasps> yeah, I would be totally freaked out. The human being was turned into a train. Most of my mates said I looked pretty good on telly. The mayor said I'd represented the people of Sodor very oh. well. Oh man. It's important to show you're confident when people are asking you awkward questions. Yeah, you gotta be straight up, man. Good evening. An act of mercy or a crime against humanity. I enjoy <laughs> crime against humanity. Even when some of the questions got you difficult, I made sure I knew what I was talking about. What was your reaction when you first met a talking tank engine? <laughs> oh. If Why is everybody throwing up around opinion, here? Or if you can't string together two words on telly, well, maybe you shouldn't be on Does it say good morning? Admittedly, the subject matter was a bit bizarre sometimes. There are some dark forces at work here. <laughs> there goes the door. You're alright, as long as you can win over the audience. See this, they're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? The Goetz family refused you to ill or something? any questions. Oh. Behind closed doors, the only question they agreed to answer... So that might be his way to get around the question, just throw up. Thomas work on the railway? The response was an emphatic no. Thomas's DNA had been reprogrammed to accept and adapt to the engine structure. What? Using the engine's internal system to maintain his organic functions. You're like but Frankenstein, no man. Sure of was how much of the engine was mechanical and how much was organic material? Thomas oh, had been able to so he had like actual coaches, organs in there. To work on the railway, his engine would need to be fired up and operated by a driver and fireman. Since no one could be sure how much of the engine was, oh my Thomas, God! The pressure caused by the engine could rupture his organs from the inside, and the incredible heat could boil him alive. And does Professor not look pleasant. And his father vowed Thomas would never work on the railways. Similarly, the two professors were to refuse many requests by people from around the world who wished to be biofused into engines. What? There were billionaires offering to pay whatever they wanted to be converted of course, into an engine man. or some <laughs> other transport. People with money Trade wanted to be turned into to. a train. And people with terminal illnesses were desperate to be made into trains. But for some reason, this is a the freak experiment, refused. man. But there would be other interested parties eager to seize on the biofusion gold mine. The independently wealthy Topham Hat staged a hostile takeover, uh -oh. and within weeks had bought a controlling share in Sodor Research. 
Oh. Immediately, the policy of the company changed, and so did the ethics. The medical supply wing was shut down, and work began on mass biofusion experiments and Oh, it's not good. Anyone who could afford it, some handing over their whole fortunes, were turned into engines. You gotta be some type of freak. But along with the new policy, there would be worse to come. Biofused engines would be allowed, then obliged to work on the railways. The first one we fired up was Why James. would you want to be a working train? didn't have the money some of these people had, and so agreed to basically sign his life away if they wanted to experiment further, or to take massive risks like this. Crazy, man. As usual, the fat f had everything recorded. All kept classified, you understand? These recordings, shown for the first time, reveal the extent of Sir Topham Hatt's experiments. It was horrible watching these engines work on the railways some days. But the tourists wanted to see it. They expected it. Oh and for man. Me, it was work. Oh, but it's overheating. With the new engine's increasing work schedule came more and more accidents. This is so weird, man. Problems. He'd been filming all day for the new TV series they'd announced. And for his last scene, Deleted he had to footage. pull into Wellsworth Station and whistle to the kids on the platform. Peep, peep. Whistled Edward. Thank you very much. Oh! Who so, what? This was only the first in an increasing number of incidents. Why did he shoot out blood? Had with aircraft and appeared to become a helicopter. The operation had gone well, but we had to ban him from being allowed to. So he moved from flight. trains to in helicopters. Experiment kept secret until now. Maybe the diesel engine was to be the first biofused oh. locomotive used on the railway. We fueled her up and everything seemed fine. Then things got out of hand. Oh. The diesel began to burn her internal organs. Everything on oh my God, that the sounds engine painful. was soon burning. Oh, it's on fire. We heard a locomotive scream in pain. Oh my, Red oh, that thing just burst to flames. Water. But by then it was too late. Maybe his body Rip. Be kept oh my god, look at the face. In an unexpected U-turn, Sir Topham Hatch would ban fueled engines from being used on the island. Oh man, so no fuel engines. He couldn't fly, but the decision would keep him alive, if only Harold. for a little while longer. In fact, unknown to the outside world, there had been many failed biofusion experiments. That of course, man, there's always the trial and error. Secret. And legal disclaimers had to be signed by anyone being biofused. So there'd be no legal action taken if anything went wrong. This footage shows engines being displayed to tourists during the off season. That is so Many weird. Of these engines were failed biofusion experiments and were too ill to work. A birdie? Or were already dead. They had to put a stop to that though. Percy? Oh! With all accidents happening, they all started asking the same thing. Why did Thomas, the first engine, work so well? Why did he work so well? All the troubles the other engines had. I mean, because Thomas his father did create himself. Seemingly oblivious to the other engine's problems and accidents. Keeping their problems a secret from the outside world, Sodor Research began selling the technology to other countries oh, no. in multi-million pound deals. This These is not good. These would have less qualms about the use of fuel engines and even the modern electric trains. Even failed biofused engines were being displayed publicly in what would become a kind of freak show. Oh my god, no one has to two horror, faces. Professor Hans Goetze so what Even Thomas is freaked to. out. Slavery of engines. Dude, they're like playing tug of war. Resigned. His father, Reconstruction. Wilhelm, would go one step further. Oh no. Let's see what he had. What he's up to now. Seems like he's reminiscing or something. Oh. What is that, a train? Oh, that's a gun. Oh. Yo. Oh, uh oh.
No, don't do it, man. Oh my god. Professor Wilhelm couldn't come to terms with what was happening to his engines and took the only It was too much for him to handle. That fat f got a load of us rail staff over to his house to clean up after the body was taken away. You should have seen it. Sawdust everywhere. It took us days. But such attempts to keep the incidents on Sodor a secret were short lived after a very public accident. Wow. Jordan paid an enormous amount to be Sodor's first 462 configuration engine. Much bigger than any other engine at the time. We were terrified Great, a bigger that engine. Fat it would make us fire up that huge engine. We were shocked to discover he had insisted on being able to work on the railway. So, one night after the regular staff had finished for the day, fat some of the rail staff and I fired uh -oh. up the engine. As usual, these experiments were filmed. This footage has never been broadcast before. Dr. Ruth and I filmed it all. I want to see the footage, it man. It a bit shaky. It was handheld. Oh, he has it. At first, Gordon complained about the heat. Then that turns to please. To oh, man, that does fire. look like a lot of steam coming out. It held us back. He wanted to see what would happen. He argued he had put a lot of work into Gordon. Of course he does. He doesn't care. He just wants the money. An opportunity. He oh, he's in pain. The inside. By the time we were allowed to act, Yo, he's like late. compressing. Because of oh, he couldn't take it, man. I wasn't as near to him as some of them. He just blew his engine All out. All I could do was run. I was lucky to get away with some singed clothes. Others weren't so lucky. The fateful few hours following the accident would seal the fate of Sodor Research. Oh no! The oh, that's good, man. Put out the fire, insisting that any evidence would fall back on us. He kept repeating, this was all your fault, you knew the dangers, you're legally to blame. He blame the man. for ambulances or the fire brigade. We told him, these are injured people here, they're going to die unless we do something. But he kept saying, no one from the outside can come in, wow. no one can see this. Finally, someone suggested we airlift them to hospital. Harold was banned from flying for his own safety. But we thought the risk was worth it. Uh oh. Fueling Harold was a nervous experience. Uh -oh. Would he have the same reaction Mavis had? We all breathed a sigh of relief and loaded the injured people aboard. Then it all went wrong. Oh no, I knew it. That was not a good idea. Oh my god, he's spilling blood out. engine had worked fine, but what wow. no one realized was most of Harold's lower extremities were permanently fused to his propeller system. As Harold's rotor blades began to spin, vital organs oh, were man. drawn into the motor and tear him apart from the inside. Well, Poor Harold. there was no covering it up. The smoke could be seen all morning. But new of course, man, there were an two explosions. We were told to close gates and start clearing up the mess ourselves with some help. Henry Thierry was the only 420 gauge engine on the island. A large engine that had been working on the railway regularly, he had become popular among He's gonna die too, I know it. Locals. Henry was called into the yard to help tidy the mess. Working mostly at night, he would cart away the wreckage under cover of darkness. We had to work quickly and quietly. Henry would cart wreckage from the yard away to the sea. Oh, then he would dump everything on the ocean. Room, and we were diverted to another shed. Henry had inadvertently shed been 17? sent to shed number 17. Ooh. Where Thomas had been biofused into a tank engine. And had oh. subsequently been declared out So now it's Thomas the tank engine, it ladies dark, and gentlemen. And sheds all looked the same. I unlocked the doors and Henry rolled in. I didn't see what Henry saw. Because as soon as he put his head through doors, he bolted oh. and reversed out. Dude, I want to see. Come Keith on. Keith locked the shed up without seeing what was inside. But Henry had seen it all. We wouldn't even dare talk about that shed. More than our job's worth. But Henry had decided Come to Come on, we need to see what's in that shed. Sir Topham Hatt. That night, he arrived at the railway controller's office. 
I don't know what was said in there, <laughs> He's in the there were voices at times. They had a shouting match for 10 minutes, then Henry left, back to the shed. By pure chance, he was sent back to the same shed as Thomas that night, and with one sentence, he sealed both their fates. Oh, Henry what did he do? One thing to him, stay away from Shed 17. The next shed day, 17. The fat had a new job for him. Okay, so Thomas is still Thomas, my bad. The flying keeper route ran through the night. So the next in a flying killer? The mainland, across the highest altitude line in the country. That old line was treacherous at best, but when Henry was put on there, in the middle of winter, it was a death trap. In 1970, fish were being delivered by road to the mainland. It was safer and more cost effective, and the line was declared redundant. Dangerous and unnecessary, it came as a shock to the islanders when it was reopened. That fat shite always hated Henry. He didn't like his cheerful manner. Oh and he man. He had other uh, lifestyle choices when he was a human. Seems like it's a setup, man. Henry he did not like him to begin endings. with. And Kipper Run was a death sentence. On the night of February the 8th, 1983, Henry had only been on the Kipper I told you guys he was going to die. The following incident would be made into a book and later recreated oh, in a derailed. series. This is the train the railwaymen call the Flying Kipper. The Flying Kipper. Can you believe they put it in a kid's story? Of course, that fat f***er changed quite a few of their facts. Of course, man, he's evil. The main line to a siding were frozen, and the home signal should have been set at danger, but snow had forced it down. As the train approached the most oh, I part see. of the line, unnoticed to Henry, his driver and fireman, that the points had diverted them to the adjoining siding and right into the path of another train. Wow. Those look like fuel tanks. Yep. Big explosion coming. Dude. That was a setup, bro. That had to be a setup. I mean, obviously it was. Oh, so he managed to jump out. Alan Barry died from their injuries. Oh, that is so messed up, bro. In snow. He got buried by the snow out there. By midday, the recovery operation was underway. And Sir Top oh, poor arrived. Henry. Cheer up, Henry. It wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused Of course it accident. wasn't his fault. You set him up. You set him These up, Batman. These from a train spotter's camera were taken the evening before and were successfully covered I up knew it. by the Sodor Railway Board for 10 years. There was a railway spike in points blocking them. Wow. Of course, that had disappeared by the time we got there. I'm sending you to This man is so evil and fat. Crew. Crew. We all knew what that meant. All right, this can't be good It'll for give Henry. You a new shape and a larger firebox. Crew boss, as the time. You know they're gonna One kill him off here. Scrap metal yards in the UK, capable of handling and recycling. Just look at this place. Material, Looks like a dump. As well as engine parts. You'll feel a different engine and won't need special coal anymore. With those few words, it sentenced Henry to death. Won't that be nice? That sucks. Yes, Henry sir. can't fight Henry for his life, man. Hopefully. He's all Everyone messed up. Everyone won't see him again. And everything was sewn up nice and neat for that fat f Yeah. Oh no, Henry. As news got out about Henry's accident, it didn't take long for Thomas to realize Henry had been disposed of because of what he knew. The next oh no, evening, Thomas. What are Thomas you up to, Thomas? Thomas had been put on his own for the night at Knapford Station. As his driver and fireman left, under what was left of his own steam, he set off for the Sodor Research Complex. He's gonna go to Shed 17. He had a small amount of burning fuel in his firebox, but he was mostly moving under his own strength. It took Thomas three hours to get to the complex. Three hours? The efforts to get there nearly killing him. Oh, poor Thomas. Thomas arrived at midnight. He had to do what he had to no do to get there. He made his way to the shed where he Get all that created. steam. What he found was the answers to his questions and many others. Since Soda research had become producing biofuels oh, vehicles. Oh, we're about to see what's inside of Shed 17. Why had the first biofusion operation worked so well? 
but nearly every operation since had failed. Sadly, Thomas found the reasons inside. Oh. Oh, here goes nothing, the truth behind all of this. Come on, Thomas, show us. Thomas had never been the first operation. He hadn't even He's been He's never second. been the first? Or second? What shed number 17 contained. Thomas Experiment 3? Of several attempts to create Oh, well that's a skull with terrain with wheels. Thomas's DNA. These had been early tests made by people with no experience of an experiment what? on this scale. So it was a trial and error before Bill they Brandon actually made Thomas train. These procedures had used DNA from the human Thomas and had been as much the real Thomas this as is some the tank freak engine experiment. the world had come to know and love. To us, Thomas the tank engine had been the Thomas we all knew as a boy. Part of the family the whole island's population had known and respected. That is so creepy. Since Wilhelm first arrived. In actuality, this tank engine was no more the real Thomas than all the failed creations made over the 12 months before. Oh man, I wonder how many of them. This Thomas had all the human Thomas's memories and experiences. He had learned what Thomas had learned. What? Known who Thomas had known. He was one with the but train. So had all the previous failures. Wilhelm and Hans Goetze had had to learn through trial and error how to course, bring their Thomas back from the dead. The following experiments had oh. not had the same work put into them, resulting in the freak engines and aircraft that had developed so many All those problems lives on lost. Sodor Island and around the world. In Shed 17, Thomas wouldn't discover who he was, but in fact, who he wasn't. Who he wasn't? Come on, Thomas. Dude, there's a skull in there. What? It's a skull with a train head. Oh. Oh. Dude, his spine and everything's in there. Oh my god, what is going on? Yo, okay, this is out of hand now. Oh my god, Thomas? Yeah, I don't think I can look at Thomas the Train the same anymore, guys. No. No. How is he still alive? Oh, he's gonna break out of there. Dude, his face just blew off. <laughs> oh my god, he's a freak! He had no idea he was only one of many clones. None of us did. But I guess it's time He was a passed. clone! We stopped asking all the questions we had at first. We were just glad our friend was back with us. He could work for us. He became our servant in a way. Someone who drew in the crowds. Oh had my god. Jobs. Was eager to work. Thomas always Unlike Thomas was before he was actually this. Sadly, over time we came to think of him as just really useful. That's messed up. They just used my boy. Dude, you're gonna blow up. You don't stop. Wow, in uh, 1983, a government inquiry was launched into the events of, on Soder Island and the labs of Soder Research. Biofusion was banned the following year. Yeah, I would not blame Biofusion being banned. Uh, compulsory work biofusion engines was finally banned after the wind scale nuclear flash test of July. Dude, was that. You just crashed into that. 
So the top man that had disappeared without trace, his whereabouts were never discovered. He would now be one of a hundred and a hundred and two years old. This man's a mummy in real life. Thomas the tank engine reminds the specialist uh, unit where he has currently undergone 23 reconstructive operations. Biofusion was later banned in Europe, although biofuse engines are still required to work. Sadly, in China, biofusion is still compulsory for all political prisoners. Queen High. Biofusion training is never late. Oh, that messed up, man. Leave the train alone. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Starring Abby Al. Oh man, dude. This was insane. <laughs> oh man. So this was like the origin of Thomas. In the aftermath of the Mr. Ship inquiry, we ask, how much did ITV know? And where next for Robin and Rosie? Oh, oh, fucking Warren, fucking oh man. Shelby. Of Cockleshell Bay. All right, well, that was pretty insane. We we got the whole backstory of how Thomas became an actual trade on his whereabouts and all the clones in Shed 17. I wonder how many trial and errors there must have been before they actually perfected a, for the Thomas clone to be itself and working and functioning. And it was pretty freaky that he shared like the same memories and all that stuff from the previous actual human flesh Thomas before he had his incident. Yeah, man, I have no words for this. All right, you guys. Well, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to slap the like button. And if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe and turn that notification bell on and hit all notifications. And I will see you all in the next one. Ah!